Welcome back to the channel today. I want to try to polish this old turd here. Got Lauren with me. Yeah. Have you have you even really seen inside this truck yet? No. I think you've been like. I was in the front seat when you were trying to get it started, and it was disgusting. Oh, that's right. <laughs> in your like nice work clothes, uh -huh. but uh, Lauren refuses to ride in this truck for some reason. Um, probably because of what you discovered yesterday. Would you like to tell everyone? Oh. What you discovered. Yeah, so I didn't get this on video. I had to clean the truck out to get stuff over to the new shop, but I found a rat body that was probably about that wide. And it was just a skeleton. It wasn't even a body anymore. It's been in there a long time. Yeah, I didn't get it on video because again, I had to clean it out real quick to load stuff up, but that was a, that was a good find. Yeah, I'm not getting in there till you clean the whole thing. Yeah, so <laughs> we got a lot of work ahead of us. You got a lot of work to do today too, right? So hopefully by the end of the day, this thing will be clean. It's probably gonna be a couple day ordeal. I can't wait to see it clean. Yeah, me too. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I know that this doesn't look the best, but you know what, it's functional. And the ratchet strap actually matches the blue on the side of the truck. But like I was telling Lauren, I noticed uh, yesterday when I was driving, cause I finally got this thing going up to like highway speeds and uh, it just, <laughs> it just opens up like this when you're driving down the road. So uh, I do have another hood in there, but to mitigate that for now, cause I still wanna keep, I wanna rock this hood for a little while. I think I'm just gonna put a strap down the middle and hook it on the bumper down here. And uh, that should be safe. Don't scratch the paint. All right, let's do a quick walk around cause we're gonna do a before and after in this video. And as you can see, it's been a while since she's been washed. It's, it's just like this on the roof too. It's just had a bunch of stuff sitting on the truck over time and it's just left this thick layer of dirt. And, uh, and obviously like we've been experiencing some rust when I was driving yesterday. This one, it popped up like that. So I'm just putting that back right there. So yeah, all of our chrome is rust stained. I might leave it because I kind of like it. Um, but we're gonna do the, the sweet patina treatment on this thing. I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna wash this off, pressure wash all the algae and all the buildup. We're gonna wash all that off, come through and do a one-step polish, polish in the glass. Probably gonna pop our topper off so I can get the back glass real clean. I'll give you a sneak peek of the interior. You can't see through the glass and that is a problem when you're driving down the road. You got a bunch of algae build up. So we're just gonna go nuts with the pressure washer. Try to get a lot of this stuff off. Again, we're gonna come through, clean all this off. I think it's gonna clean up pretty nice. And maybe it will eventually get to the point of uh, rust not falling off the truck when you shut the door. I also wanted to show you all this. Look at all the build up here of just the dirt and whatever. And then you got moss and yeah. Yeah. Let's hop on the inside, give you a closer look. So uh, the front seat is, is trashed, but what I'm thinking is we take the boys around in the truck and they have their boosters. So I might put this one back here. Cause look at this seat. This one's actually really nice and it's in really, really good shape. So I'm thinking, you know, we'll just switch these out and uh, that will take care of that. But when I pull the seats out, probably going to be pulling the carpet to do a pressure washing job because it's just uh, disgusting. And it leaks like crazy. So we got a bunch of rust down here in the kick panels. Can't do anything about that right now. Big rust holes right here. Uh, but we're gonna go through and get this thing all cleaned up. Also, we got a sticky steering wheel. If you look here, see that goop? I don't know what it is, but a lot of old steering wheels do that. And um, I'm gonna try to clean that off with some mineral spirits. I'm gonna try a couple different chemicals on there. Again, just clean everything up, make it a little more tidy, make it a little more nice. So back here, it, it looks clean for the most part, but when you start peeling back layers, you know, oh, we got still got bugs in here. We got rot, you know, we're starting to show through the floor. That whole front panel has got rot on the bottom. I'm gonna pull this mat out, pressure wash it. And when I pull this topper out, uh, we'll get the bed as clean as we can. And, uh, oh, I just noticed there's a gap up there. So maybe if we seal that up, less water will get in. Um, but yeah, and then we'll give the old camper topper a polish too. I'm doing too much talking. It's time to get to work. Hope you guys enjoy this video.
Are you ready? Yep. All right, one, two, three. Okay. Is there anything in front of me in the bed? Not yet, just keep going. All right, set it down. Yep. All right, let's go to my left, your right. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's put it in the grass. All right. I guess, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, we should've got that on video. <laughs> Here, you wanna get out before I drop it? It's another workout for you. What do you think, does that look worse or better? better. You like it without the topper? I hate the topper. Really? Yeah. I think it adds uh, some pizzazz to it. You love pizzazz. That's right. It's like a boat. Daggum, that looks so much better, dude. Even just doing a quick pressure wash job made a night and day difference with this thing. This thing cleaned up really good too. I did end up getting some new uh, weather stripping so we can reseal that, hopefully stop the leaking. And uh, got some hood pins on order. Gonna see if we can't. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next I would normally hit the body with uh, sweet patina, so fresh and so clean. But I ran out because I use it literally all the time. It works so good, especially for this next part that I'm about to show you. So, oh man, it's bright, hang on. So this is a single stage paint, which means when we start polishing this, 
we're gonna take a layer of paint off. And right now there is a layer of chalkiness on it. You see that in my hands? So what you wanna do with the So Fresh and So Clean, or in this case, it's a Giddy Up 409, cause that's all I have right now. Uh, we spray it down and then just give it a good rub. Now that's gonna help uh, get rid of some of that chalk. It makes it a little better, but I'm telling you, that stuff is, is really stuck on the paint. So this is like the pre-polish step. We're just gonna spray it down, wipe it down as best as we can. This truck was repainted too, and the repaint uh, wasn't great. There's still a lot of texture in that paint. But that's okay. We'll make it look a little better. Now hear me out, if you wanted to go ahead and put the sweet patina on after wiping it down, by all means, you do you. You could literally put it on here and it'll have a nice little shine for a while and it works. I've done it on that C10 there. I've undercoated vehicles with it. I mean, it's awesome. But if you take a, take a couple extra minutes, an hour and do a polish, now that's really where the sweet patina is gonna shine because you're gonna polish this base layer of paint right here. And when you put that sweet patina on, man, it is the perfect combination. And if you don't have a buffer or actually if you are intimidated by polishing at all, I mean, this is the perfect place to start. You can't screw it up. Well, now it's time to polish the truck as Sweet Patina sells this Century Polish, which is perfect for single stage paint. It also works on clear coat as well. I've actually done a couple of tests with it and uh, the polish is pretty good. So the thing is you wanna choose the right pad. Now you can apply this with a microfiber towel. If you have a surface area that's as big as a crew cab long bed dually, it's gonna take you 15 business days to accomplish that. Well, what I'm gonna go with is an orange pad. This one's already beat up because I'm telling you, there's so much rust and stuff in this paint. This pad is gonna be done after this. I'd be surprised if you even made it all the way through this polish job. And I could start with a lighter cut, but judging by the condition of this paint and given the fact that I don't really care about it, I think this is the perfect place to start. So all we gotta do is load up our pad, kind of like pre-soak it because I haven't used this pad today. So we'll just rub it all in there, right? That kind of like hydrates it. You get, the, you get the polish in the pores and all that stuff. Then we'll do a couple of drops. One thing about the directions, it says don't use in direct sunlight. I actually got pretty lucky because we got overcast right now and we got a storm coming. So that's even better. I'm gonna start this on a, a low, low speed. Just kind of help cover the, uh, get, our, get our coverage nice and even. Caught on the rust there. And then we'll, we'll just... Keeps getting caught on the rust. All right, so let's put it up to, uh, we got, let's put it up to a four. It's not too bad on the pad. Yeah, this paint job just wasn't done very well. <laughs> so this is giving me Camaro flashbacks. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but uh, my buddy Greg has a IROC, uh, uh, 80s Camaro, an IROC body style, and it has like a $50 Mako paint job on it. And it was just, we got it to shine, but man, it was rough. That's a fun car anyway. I'm gonna hit this again, pick up the speed. I think I wanna go maybe just max speed because why not? Again, spread it around, get some even coverage. One more. There we go. Now, if I run this buffer on the whole truck at that speed, this pad is gonna disintegrate. 
So the rest of the paint's in a little bit better shape and I don't think I'll have to go as fast and be as aggressive with it. But this actually is uh, doing what I want it to do. It's not quite as shiny as I was hoping. Again, because the paint I'm starting with isn't great, but it's smooth. Let me see if I can get you guys to see the, the reflection. Can you see it in there? Oh yeah, there you go. You see the, all the clouds and the, the sun poking through there. And you go over here. That's gonna be a lot, oh, you see, that's perfect right there. You see that line right there where the clouds stop? One thing I don't like is um, there's like a texture right here and it seems to have held on to a lot of dirt. So I might have to get a Scotch-Brite and I was trying to avoid that, but see how this is nice and, and uniform and then you have these, these spots where uh, it's like, the dirt's hanging on in those little pores. I was hoping the polish would take it out, but it's not the case. Oh man, I found a dent in my hood. Now it's all shiny. Well, that sucks. So if I really want to get rid of that texture, I could do a wet sand and polish, but uh, why? We're just gonna continue on the hood. I'm gonna max out uh, the speed of the buffer on the hood, and then we're gonna try a slower speed on the sides because again, it's not, uh, there, it, the sides are in a uh, better shape than the hood because the hood and the roof, I mean, it takes the brunt of that Florida sun and it gets tore up. All right. Just wrapped up the hood. I think the approach with this truck is gonna be to do all the cream first, cause it's single stage, and then we'll go and do the blue. But this is just the, the pass with the hood. And if you look, I mean, it's, it's just a bunch of paint there built up already. So what we're gonna do is take our uh, pressure washer and turn it on. Let's clean this pad out. like that. And I'll take my polish on a low speed in a bucket. Basically I wring it out. Now if I was doing like a nice paint job, I would have multiple pads and I would wash it out and let it dry or dry for the most part before I jump right back in. But you know, we're having fun. This is just this is just fun. We're just gonna go for it. definitely don't like that. Oh, you'll notice the paint is now discolored around the windshield, the glass. Apparently, this stuff will stain the paint. This is when that all-purpose cleaner would be perfect. This stuff works okay. Again, when you're polishing dirt, it's not about perfection. It's about making it look better. Oh, that's actually nice right there.
totally annihilated this pad. Got done with the tan though, and it's looking pretty good. See that little shine in there? We're gonna get rid of the, the, the sunlight's gonna go away in a couple minutes, but just wanted to give you guys a quick walk around before I started on that blue. All right, I got my new pad on my polisher and just gonna repeat the same process. Again, nothing fancy. Just gonna load my, uh, my pad up. I do like the, the orange pad on this paint. I don't think the white pad would be quite enough. This seems to be doing really good though. All right, let's see what we got. Put a little more on some new pads, pretty dry. Yeah, the blue's already coming off. Can you see that on my pad at all? That's why I wanted to do one color with one pad and the other color with a different pad. That looks nice. Still a lot of like streaking in the paint. I mean, you could barely see it. If I could see it with my uh, sunglasses on. It's, I mean, it's barely there, but it's there. Got some shine back. Y'all see that? I'll bring you in, check it out. Getting a little bit of shine back to that blue. You got unpolished. And then you got polished. Again, not a crazy sheen. This isn't gonna be like a base coat, clear coat where you're gonna have like super glossy paint, especially with as old as this paint is. I mean, if I wet sanded it and went nuts, we could probably get there, but this is gonna be perfect for what I need. Well, I've decided I wanna to try to clean up this stainless steel a little bit. Got some mother's metal polish here in a rag. Come on in, let me see what we can do with this with just a couple of passes. So you see this, all this rust has just stained, stained the stainless. Do a little dab of our uh, mother's polish here. Come in. We gotta be careful of that one. Huh. This is looking good, but it seems like I need to get a little more action down in the, uh, the details of this trim. How about we uh, get that out of the way? There we go. That is looking nice. So again, that's what you're starting with. That's what I'm getting. Heck yeah, brother. That looks pretty dang good. Now it's not perfect. I really wish I had some uh, four aught steel wool to help with, uh, with getting that rust out, but this is doing the trick. It's just taking a little longer than I want. We got these spots on the bumper here. It's just that oxidation, that rust, rusty water dripping down there and getting on our bumper. With a little rubbing though, check it out. Oh. 
Dad gum. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing the whole bumper. So he went from that to that. Heck yeah. Just wrapped up with the trim around the grill. It looks pretty dang good, man. This was all rust stained too. I was able to get that all out. Everything on the bumper. Starting to look pretty clean. I'm gonna move on to this trim. Uh, I'm just gonna hit it real quick. I'm not really gonna spend a bunch of time on it. Maybe polish this up real fast. I did get a, um, like a stick on piece of glass cause this is, well, this one's loose, but the other one's worse. You can hardly see out of it. And then I got a plan for the windows and we could finally put on the patina sauce, but uh, oh, probably do this rear bumper too. Yeah, this one's definitely not nearly as bad as the front, but that'll clean up pretty nice. She's coming together. I gotta put these two pieces of trim back on. This one just popped off. This one was never on, so. Just get some double-sized sticky tape and Y'all remember when I said I had a, a plan for the windows? Well, when something sits outside for as long as this has, you can't just like wipe the glass down. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that's embedded in it. Well, let me rephrase that. You can wipe it down, but it's not always gonna get all that junk off of the windshield or off of the glass. So what I'm gonna do is uh, give everything a nice, good old wipe down, and then grab my uh, white polishing pad and the Century Polish from Sweet Patina, and just hit the glass real quick, and I think that's gonna really help clean these up. Much better. See, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Just a quick little polish and you're good. Time to look at the wheels. So these came from my 93 Chevy Dually and they are Alcoa, 16 inch Alcoa wheels from the factory. So this is aluminum and these will polish up really nice by a professional, which I am not. So what I'm gonna do is spray it down with some soap and water. We're just gonna kinda wipe off the, the big stuff, right? I'm gonna take my mother's metal polish and I have an orange, well it was orange, pad on this drill attachment. Is this the proper way to polish aluminum? Probably not, but you know what? It's gonna look a lot better than that. Oh dang, it's already coming back. Oh man, I'm like really excited to wipe this off. Whoa, I did not expect that to work so good so quickly. 
<laughs> Come on in here. Bad gum. That looks awesome. I mean, I still gotta really work in these cuts if I want it to be like top notch, but I think I'm gonna do a proper like sand and buff on these wheels because I've never polished aluminum wheels before at that level, but it would be cool to bring these back to like a mirror finish. But I think this is perfect for this truck. Also, I do have the center caps and um, I don't have my half inch impact to take off the lug nuts right now. So we're gonna have to wait till we get back over to the shop to do that. Also, some of you guys and gals have been commenting my lug nuts are backwards. Uh, oh, you can see my reflection in here. So, dude. Well, this is a hub centric wheel. That means when this wheel goes on, it finds the center on this hub right here. So you don't need to put the lug nuts in the other way. Actually, on my OBS dually over there, it has almost a uh, washer on the back side of the lug nut so that it just grips the wheel and it doesn't dig into the wheel. I don't want these lug nuts digging into my wheel. If I flip them around, they'll dig into it. So they're gonna stay like that. Well, the rears definitely didn't come out as good as the fronts did, but I'm cool with it. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Remember, we just want it to look better, not perfect. So our final step before putting on the sweet patina is to spray and wipe this thing down. Now, normally I would use my So Fresh So Clean Sweet Patina All-Purpose Cleaner, but again, I use it so much I ran out. So I mixed up some um, isopropyl alcohol and water mix and uh, that's gonna get the grease off of the surface so we can put on the patina sauce. Also, don't mind the kids in the background. House is a neighborhood hangout today. Well, the neighborhood hangout has turned into an epic laser tag game, so Please bear with me while all the chaos is going on. Sweet Patina Patina Sauce. It uh, polymerizes to a hard finish, uh, provides some protection on your uh, single stage, and even applies a little bit of protection to the, uh, the rust, the patina. I don't think this is patina, I think this is rust. Anyway, it's a pretty easy application. You wipe it on, you let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and wipe it off. So basically you start at a point on the vehicle, work your way around. By the time you get back to where you started, you wipe it off. Also, they have it in an aerosol can, and this works really well on the hard to get to places. I've used it as a frame undercoating, and I'm gonna use this today in the door jams and apply it to some uh, rust that we have in the roof because I don't want it to get any worse before we are able to get to the repairs. And uh, I think this is gonna be perfect for what we're trying to do. I also only have one glove. Today's just awesome. Everything's over at the shop and uh, I've had to make a couple trips over there to uh, get what I need. What's up? What happened? Um, you're gonna have to go ask Miss Lauren, but go around back. Excuse me. See, did I miss any? 
I think the hood and the roof are gonna suck up a lot of this stuff because they're, they're just uh, kind of porous, you know. They're just not in the best condition. Why are they doing this? Laser tag. Yep. If you remember, I did not do anything with this tailgate other than wash it. And I didn't do anything with the tailgate other than wash it because of this. I don't want to run my polisher pad over it and completely destroy it before I was done needing it. So this is going to be, like I was saying before, if you wanted to stop and put the patina sauce on, it's going to be a lot more dramatic of a difference. I guarantee it. You ready? I am. Come on. See what I'm saying? Like, holy cow, dude. So you could literally just wash your ride and freaking throw this stuff on and you're good to go. It lasts for a while too, for a couple of months. Um, I had it, the last time I did the C10, it was like under a cover and in the garage and it lasted for about six months. But now that the C10's outside, it desperately, desperately needs to be done again. Um, but it'll, it'll only last for a couple of months. But dude, it's so easy to put on. It's like, it's easier than a wax. You know, you literally just wipe it on and wipe it off. Like, it's great. So now that I'm actually getting into some of this stuff, I'm gonna grab that can of spray. I'm gonna spray this down and I wanna try to get that patina sauce. Not that it, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm gonna replace this tailgate. So that doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Forget I said anything. That's pretty crazy, right? Oh, missed a spot. Okay, sucker is looking mint, bro. Got a little heavy build up right there. It's all good. Oh, just look at that lovely sheen. Now it's not gonna stay this glossy. It's gonna dull down a little bit as it dries. It does take about a day for it to fully cure. So you don't want it to be raining right after you apply this stuff. And literally now that it's been the 15 to 20 minute window, uh, just wipe it off. This is what you do. See? That's what you do. See? See what I'm doing? That's what you do. Also, when you wipe it down, it kind of uh, levels out the finish a bit. You know, like ceramic coating. <laughs> just like that. So these definitely feel different. This is definitely a lot slicker. It's more slickery than this tailgate right here. Keep in mind, I polished this, I didn't polish this. But it still looks really nice. If that's the look you're going for. See if I can catch. Yeah, you see we got a little sheen right there. Definitely a lot more sheen right here. Again, you could stop here if you wanted to. This is perfectly acceptable. But I'm gonna throw another coat on the hood and then I'm gonna hit these door jams. Let me do this real quick and I'll bring you guys along for the door jam excitement. Yeah, this stuff is awesome too really makes these door jams a breeze. Yeah, this does a really good job just like packing that patina sauce in where the rust is. And again, this isn't gonna be like a, 
a cure-all for your rust problems <laughs> by any means, but it does help slow it down, especially if you stay on top of it. Beautiful. She's looking pretty dang slick, man. I cannot wait to see this in the sunlight. Just wanna say one more thing about the sweet patina, uh, the rags. When you're done with the rags, don't just throw them in the garbage and walk away. When this stuff starts to dry and polymerize, if it's folded up on itself on a rag, it could spontaneously combust this. It's totally fine when it's on the surface, but if it's, if it's held up like that and, and bunched up, it could be no good. It's also probably a good idea to dunk these in water, maybe wring them out, and then let them dry before you throw them in the garbage. But anyway, just got, you gotta be safe when it comes to this stuff. We're gonna get back on this in the morning. I'm gonna get Lauren to help me throw the topper back on, and then we're tearing apart the interior to see if we can't get this thing looking as good on the inside as it does on the outside. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> oh no. Sorry guys. Oh, I smashed my camera. Oh no. I probably should have just uh, waited for Lauren to help me with that. I totally just destroyed the camera. Dad gummit. Not super pumped about that. I wonder if I can get a replacement screen for it. Gosh, that sucks. I tighten up that alternator belt a little bit. Just look at all the junk that came off of that truck. I gotta pressure wash this whole driveway. Dude, you remember when I told you guys yesterday about being really careful with these rags when you go to throw them out? Check this out. You see this? That wasn't brown yesterday. And if you look closely, it's smoking. Yep, you see that? Watch. Look, it is, it is starting to catch on fire. That is exactly why you don't wanna throw these in the garbage right away. And that just happened uh, relatively quickly. I, golly, look at that. I did soak them in rags yesterday and wring them out, but when I pulled this, this uh, pressure washer hose out, it like folded the rag over itself. And it's been a couple of minutes, but yeah, dude, if I, if I let that sit, it's just gonna catch on fire. That's crazy, I've never seen it happen before. I've just heard about it. This was the rag that was soaked with, uh, with that stuff, with that sweet patina. Dude, that's wild. Yeah, dude, you gotta be really careful with those rags. Well, now we can get started on the interior. And as you can tell, it's, uh, it's pretty gross in here. I think the game plan is to vacuum the carpets as best we can while they're in the truck. Then I'm gonna pull the bench seats out and give everything a nice deep clean. I'm gonna use the extractor on the seats, this one even though it's like kinda gone. <laughs> I'm still gonna try to clean it up. I do got some seat covers for it. And then we're gonna pull the carpet and pressure wash the carpet to really 
get that stuff cleaned out. Lay it out to dry while it's drying. Again, we'll do all our little interior stuff. Try to get this uh, a little more sanitary because right now it's, uh, it's grimy. All right, let's get these floor mats out of the way. These are gonna go in the garbage. Oh, that one like stuck to the carpet. Pretty grody, just found some broken glass. It's pretty awesome. What year is this? 2008, not exciting at all. Got a washer, got a uh, fire extinguisher. But check this out. Super Soul, volume 15. You sure love to ball. We're getting careless with our love. Victory strut. Know what your doing when you leave I think it's supposed to be apostrophe re last time I saw him I wish it were me stormy Monday that sounds familiar can this be real let them talk I mean okay maybe it's the super soul dually who knows got to clean up all this junk carpet is very brittle very brittle it's already kind of tearing around where these bolts were Look underneath. Actually, I gotta take off these sill plates. Pretty sure those two are just sitting in there. <laughs> okay. That's not too bad. Oh, I see a license plate. He did mention something about a license plate. Looks pretty good. I mean, a lot of times they're gone like around here. It's looking a little rough right there. But, uh, solid. Wish I had a mask. Last time this was checked was 2004. Should be fine, it's only 20 years ago. Well, I'm thinking the fastest way to get this carpet in uh, better shape than what it is, because it's pretty nasty, is just, we're gonna pressure wash it. I mean, it's a beautiful day outside. We're gonna get this uh, soaked down, wait for this car to drive by. Oh, it's Amazon. Oh, I bet I got some parts. Now that the carpet's out, I'm gonna hit it with a pressure washer to get the bulk of the nastiness off of it. And then we're gonna come back and do some more detailed stuff.
Now we got everything nice and soaked. I'm gonna hit this with a fabric cleaner, the whole thing. Now this is when I wish I had one of those dang big sprayers, you just psh, just hose it all down. But uh, I don't do too much detailed stuff that often. So these dadgum crows, man. Now this is all rusty and gross right here, dude. But I don't think there's gonna be much we could really do about that. I'm pretty sure this is the original carpet. Just more carpet cleaner. Just hitting it with all kinds of stuff. Just throwing everything at it today. Now here is where the magic happens. Get your drill, get this drill brush, and then just go nuts, dude. Really agitate the carpet and try to pull up as much of that staining as it as you can plus it looks cool Ooh. sweet all right let's rinse all this off here Man, when I'm, uh, when I'm going over the carpet like that, I can just see the brown nastiness coming out of there. Now I know we're in the Florida sun and this is gonna dry pretty quick, but to help suck that soap up out of the carpet and to speed along this drying process, we're gonna hit it with an extractor. Now you don't have to have an extractor, you could use a shop vac. The goal is just to get as much of the soap out as possible. And uh, I just happen to have one of these because uh, I get kind of nerdy when it comes to detail and stuff. And uh, I don't know, it's also very satisfying to watch all the dirty water come through here. And then you just left with a, well, in this case, relatively clean carpet. <laughs> See, look at that, bro. This is ridiculously satisfying. See what I'm saying? My big old head's in the way. See, look at that water, dude. You see what I'm saying? Let's dump this out. Woo, that is gross. There's still a whole bunch of dirt in there. I'm gonna go rinse this out. Okay, now that I have all of the big stuff sucked up, I'm gonna go over this again. So the good thing about the extractor is it has a, a tank where you could put water or like water and a cleaner in and you could help get even more of that stuff out of there. So I'm gonna go over this one more time using water and then we're gonna hit the next piece of carpet. This water's just as bad. I thought it was gonna be a little bit better. <laughs> Gosh. Now, if you wanted, you could go over that like multiple times and just keep going at it and going at it. I've done it uh, five or six times before and it's 
the carpets turned out really nice. But again, like you really got to consider what you're working on. Sorry, I'm so out of breath. It's hot out. Gosh. Uh, anyway, I got to give the camera a break. It's overheating. I'm gonna do that other piece of carpet and then show you what I'm doing next. What a night and day difference. I mean, yeah, we still got staining right here, but it's like really soft. And uh, this is the part, part of the carpet that was under the seat. I mean, it looks almost brand new. Now over here, the rear part of the carpet was under the seat. And dude, it's just, it looks awesome. But I might actually be able to get in this vehicle without my shoes on. Maybe not. Anyway, moving on to the seat belts. So uh, these were the original colors. It's like a buckskin, I think they call it. And these are the fronts now, they're just gray. But I'm not really worried about that. The only thing I'm really worried about is trying to get rid of some of this, uh, this is probably mold. So I'll probably hit this with again, just some fabric cleaner, hit it with a brush and then pressure wash it. And try to get that off of there. Well, it looks better. Let's keep an eye on this spot right here. Yeah. All right, let me get some cleaner. Definitely cleaning my driveway. I need to give this a proper pressure wash, but not doing that today. Well, it's better, but it's not perfect. One thing I haven't mentioned yet and that I haven't used yet today is my steamer. I bet you if I hit this with the steamer, We'd be able to get all that out but i don't again i don't want to spend too much time on this i'm good with that i'm just gonna set it right there so it can dry and we'll do the rest of these suckers moving on to the seats i'm gonna focus on this one more so than that one i think on the blue seat i'm just gonna kind of try to just get this a little clean but i'm gonna be a little more aggressive on this seat I wanna make this the front seat. I gotta figure out how to swap the brackets. They're a little bit different, but you can see here, there's uh, some discoloration. It might be kind of hard to see with the shadows, but can you see that right there? Just some stainage, some, some unsightly things. So with this one, like I said, I'm gonna be a little more aggressive. I'm gonna lightly mist it with a pressure washer, like pre-soak it, then hit it with those cleaners and hit it with that drill brush. So once I get adequate coverage and I'm happy with it, then I'll go in with the extractor and I'll hit that a couple of times. I also want to say I hit the extractor one more time on the carpet and uh, the water came out was a little murky, but it wasn't too bad. So I was a little happy, I was happier with that. But let's get started on this. Again, kind of the same premise here, not really changing anything. The only major difference is I'm not going to soak down the seat. Let's kind of get it wet a little bit. The reason I'm using these two different types of cleaners, uh, the one that I pre-mixed, that one cleans a little better. 
But this one smells good. Not as wet as I want it to be. That's all right. There's a whole lot of something right here. That water really brought that stain up to the top of this fabric here. So let's start working on this thing. Watch the nozzle. See, look how dirty it is. See that? Daggum. That is bad, dude. <laughs> that's much better now. See how a lot of the soap that's coming up is white? <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna let this dry now. One thing I am worried about, and I've seen it happen before, and it's probably gonna happen on this seat, is that that big old stain that was right here, when it dries, it's gonna pop back through. But what I've done in the past that seems to have worked is uh, when the water evaporates, it seems to bring the stain back up to the top, and then you spray it down with your uh, fabric cleaner, and then wipe it with a microfiber, and that seems to, push it back down there <laughs> but that looks pretty good I'm gonna go around and wipe the the vinyl down how does the back look it looks all right yeah we'll just wipe the back down and then move on to this other one well now I'm gonna bring some life back these old trim pieces bust it out the steamer I'm just gonna put this thing to work to get in those little nooks and crannies because in these interior pieces it's like a a vinyl imprint, so it's got some detail it's hard to get into. hit this with some paint thinner and see if that breaks up that oil. Much better. Feels good. I think these are dry enough to go back in. You 
you know, while I got the steamer going, I might as well just hit that and see what happens. Wow, that looks significantly better. This is a night and day difference in this carpet. Oh my goodness, dude. I wish you guys could feel the difference. And uh, don't think this is the factory carpet, just kind of looking at the way these holes are cut out and the way the um, bright switch is. And I found that tag right there it tells me that uh, somebody did a carpet job on this, which is cool, you know. Probably gonna end up doing one myself. But I think I'm gonna make it look a little bit better than that. Let's see if this dash pad fits any better. Now all that's left to do is to put some finishing touches on this beauty and I can show you guys the big reveal. Dude, this thing cleaned up crazy good. I cannot say enough good things about Sweet Patina, but even though I think it looks amazing, the real test is to see if Lauren will actually get in this thing and go for a ride around the block. Let's see what she thinks of this beast. Made it back to the house. Lauren has kind of seen the outside, not really the inside, right? Yeah, the last time I saw the inside, it was still ripped seats and is better. Well, you split flopped. I did, yeah, yeah. Let's do a walk around. Yeah. Let me know what you think. I am just blown away that the hood is actually painted under there. I thought the whole thing was rusty. I, actually, a lot of people thought that. A couple yep. people, a couple other people reached out and they were like, "Oh man, I thought that was all rust." Hey, bud. Does it? Oh, I'm excited to see it. Am I allowed to look now? Yeah. <gasps> Where'd you get these? Amazon. Oh, Amazon. They're the same ones as the uh, yeah right so will you willingly get in the truck <laughs> yeah all right i don't know if i want to put this clean right? yeah it's it's uh clean dirt you trying to help her in yeah he's like get in did you already. see did you notice the carpet though yeah it looks fantastic are these new or did you just clean them um i got these for cookie monster but i feel like they're better suited for this truck yeah. let's take this thing around the kinda, block like, smells good yeah that's why I use that lemon scented whatever. So it smells good. Also, it might it might still smell like Amazon from the new seat covers. So maybe it is close. Yeah, Please. that's what happens when you sit next to each other. Do you stink? Probably. <laughs> you gonna you gonna work a seatbelt? Got it. Got it. Go. Ready. Set. Go. We haven't done this in years. 
You can put that in the seat next to you. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. I haven't been in this when it's driving at all. Yep, this is the first time when we're driving. Yeah. Like you it's so smooth. You did sit in it to help me get it started. Oh uh, yeah. It was roach infested at that point. Yeah, that was at its worst. it up to speed so you really know how it, how it feels you know we might be taking this truck to uh, c10 fall revival so. so i better get used to it yeah you hear how it doesn't want to like shift into the next gear no oh really like normally it would shift into another gear. Right now? Yeah. Got it, yeah. But this truck only has three gears. Not like four with overdrive. So going 70 is, is tough. So we should definitely take it. So we should take it on an eight hour, what would be an eight hour road trip. We're going 65 the whole time. That's right. The sky's really like the brown spot that we went. Yep. I don't know what you're talking about, burnout spot, bud. This part where we were in the blazer. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about, dude. We're, we're you're messing around. <laughs> yeah, oh, do you want to drive it? Nope. You should Not drive it. it. Yeah, you should drive it. You should drive it. Should I sit in the middle? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. Why are, you, why are you so far from me? Nope. No, know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you, yes, you are. You're smiling. Oh, hey, gentle, gentle. You're smiling, bro. You're smiling. Oh. You're smiling, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Smile. 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 You're talking about. Well, the steering wheel's a little sticky. It was very it's sticky, but now it's like less sticky. Dad. So your hands shouldn't turn black. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to get going, but once you have it set, it like wants to stay where you put it without a lot of input. So that'll be good for long cruises. Yeah. Yeah, I need to. Soft steering wheel cover. It actually drives pretty dang nice. It's been uh, it's been a, a joy to daily drive around town. I'll say that. But yeah, it's been awesome. But it does leak like crazy, like when it rains. So yeah. I got a, I got a, I think that's like my next thing on this truck is to fix all the rust. We'll see. These mirrors are a little extreme. They are very extreme. Sure. I was looking at that the other day. All right. Well, that was fun. Good job, Dad. Thanks. Come on, boys. All right, y'all. Let's get in here and eat some dinner.
Well, a couple days of busting my tail on getting this thing clean and it paid off big. Not only is this truck super fun to drive, but now that it's all clean on the inside, it's actually very enjoyable to sit in it, other than the, uh, you know, the severe leaking when it rains. But I'm super happy Lauren likes the truck because it's kind of tough to show somebody something that looks so rough and say, I promise you, it's gonna clean up. But nine times out of 10, it's gonna clean up. I mean, yeah, we got some rust issues and all that, but look at this dang truck, man. Well, this is my new daily driver till I fix the AC in the van, but dude, this thing is super handy to have around. That long bed and the topper is awesome hauling stuff around town. But I'm telling you guys and gals, I feel like everybody in America needs an old truck. To me, it's just the most practical thing to have just hanging around. You wanna go somewhere, take the old truck. You wanna go to Lowe's, take the truck. You know, you wanna haul trash to the dump, take the truck. You wanna cruise around on a Friday night, take the truck, man. This thing is awesome. Anyway, guys and gals, that's gonna do it for me on this video. I'm gonna get inside and get some dinner. I am freaking starving. As always, I appreciate y'all hanging around and watching this one. I'll see you in the next video.